Hello, and welcome to the November installment of Construction Junction, presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. The agenda for the November presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the next two Board of Trustees meetings. We will then have an overview of the campus snow plan. Next will be presentations on new projects, followed by updates on current ongoing projects. Beginning with the December BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will include, for Step 2, authorization to proceed, alterations to Wonders Hall to support teaching, learning, and students, locker room renovations at the Veterinary Medical Center, installation of a reverse osmosis system at the power plant, alterations to the Scandalaris football offices and the Hall of History, and alterations to the fourth floor of the Hanna Administration Building. And for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, the STEM Teaching, Learning, and Interdisciplinary Research Facility. Moving on to the February BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will include, for Step 2, authorization to proceed, the expansion of the Swine Teaching and Research Center, interior renovations to Cowles House, energy conservation measures in the Epley Building, and the construction of a Biological Safety Level 3 Research Lab. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of the campus snow plan. We all know that Michigan winters can be unpredictable, and so when conditions warrant, we ask that you practice good snow safety by giving yourself extra time to travel to work, driving carefully, dressing warmly, wearing sensible shoes with good traction, being extra aware of where you are walking and the condition of your path, shortening the length of your stride, and remembering to check the forecast before heading outside. For your safety, please remember to not dart in front of or behind snow removal equipment. It is large, loud, and difficult to stop quickly. And please make eye contact with snow removal equipment operators before crossing in front of them. The university uses a combination of brine and ice melt compound to combat icy conditions. Brine solution works by preventing adhesion of snow to hard surfaces, while ice melt is used on ice that has already formed. Often, both are used in combination to speed the time it takes for melting compound to take effect. If you see any icy spots on campus, please report them by calling Contact MSU at 355-1855. Please remember that it does take time for ice melt compound to take effect. We ask that the campus community partner with IPF crews to help ensure everyone's safety by applying ice melt compound to areas outside of building entrances if they see slick spots. This helps avoid incidents until our crews have a chance to clear the area. There are marked buckets of ice melt compound available at all entrances for this purpose. However, we also ask that you please be judicious with your use of ice melt compound in order to minimize the environmental impacts. Please do not park so close to sidewalks that your vehicle's bumper hangs over it. This makes clearing the sidewalk with our motorized equipment impossible. We also ask that you avoid parking in sections of lots that have not yet been cleared. Either parking in already cleared areas or waiting for our crews to finish clearing the lot before parking. We remind everyone that parking is prohibited in residence hall loops from 2 to 6 a.m. Our crews have a formidable task ahead of them after a snow event and keeping these areas free from vehicles helps removal efforts go more smoothly and quickly. Again, to request service or to report dangerous spots on campus, call Contact MSU at 355-1855. We thank you for helping us keep MSU safe during the upcoming winter season. We begin new project presentations with the planned alterations to the Veterinary Medical Center second floor locker rooms. The current locker rooms date back to the building's construction in 1966 and are out of date. Renovation of these areas is needed prior to the college's reaccreditation in the fall of 2019 and to address gender shifts in class demographics. This project will provide flexibility for potential future gender shifts, update the spaces to meet ADA compliance, and add health and wellness rooms along with gender neutral restrooms. The scope of the project will involve complete renovation of the men's and women's locker rooms to include abatement of hazardous materials, 
reconfiguration to accommodate up to 250 students, upgrades to meet ADA requirements, construction of health and wellness and religious observance rooms, and installation of new double-stacked lockers. Impacts to building occupants will include general construction noise and temporary detours to egress routes. Construction is scheduled to begin next May with completion by next August. Here you see the current second floor plan with areas affected by construction highlighted in yellow and an enlarged graphic of the same highlighted area showing the planned allocation of space. For questions regarding the VetMed Locker Room Project, contact Project Manager Matt Postma. Next is the project to renovate spaces in Wonders Hall for teaching, learning, and student support. The former Wonders Hall cafeteria area provides an opportunity to create spaces that can provide a mixture of teaching and learning as well as creation of the engineering toolbox. The project will also allow for repurposing of instructional spaces on the first floor to meet teaching and learning needs supporting engineering curriculum. The living wings at Wonders Hall also need infrastructure repairs to meet current life safety requirements, which will be coordinated with this project. The scope of the project will involve renovations to the center section of Wonders Hall to include conversion of the second floor cafeteria into teaching spaces, conversion of existing first floor classrooms to address student support needs, and various infrastructure improvements to include elevator modifications, circulation improvements, restroom additions, accessibility improvements, HVAC upgrades, and life safety improvements. The work in the center section will be coordinated with the life safety improvements in the living wings. Impacts to building occupants will include general construction noise and temporary detours to egress routes. Construction is scheduled to begin in January with completion by December of 2019. The existing Kiva space will remain. However, other spaces will be renovated to meet teaching, learning, and student support needs. Here you see the floor plans of the first and second floor spaces highlighting the areas affected by construction in green. For questions regarding the Wonders Hall project, contact Project Manager Matt Postma. We now begin our updates with the Wilson Road Extension Project. Accomplishments during the month of October included the installation of the right turn lane and sidewalks from southbound Hagedorn to westbound Shaw Lane, the installation of curbs and asphalt base course on the Wilson Road Extension and in parking lot 33, and the removal of the Hagedorn Road Boulevard pass-throughs with construction of the new configuration in progress. Impacts expected in November will include minor pedestrian route detours between parking lot 91 and Fee Hall, continued detours for access in and out of the River Terrace neighborhood, and various pedestrian and vehicular detours, including lane closures on Hagedorn Road until November 15. Here is a graphic showing the River Terrace access detour details and the construction phasing plan showing areas impacted by construction for the period through mid-November. Here is a shot of the entrance to the new Wilson Road extension from the Hagedorn Road intersection and of the paving in progress in parking lot 33. For questions regarding the Wilson Road project, contact Project Manager Dave Wilbur. Next is an update on the Interdisciplinary Science and Technology Building Construction Project. Accomplishments during the month of October included completion of gas service installation, pouring of concrete sidewalks around the building, and setting in place of the generator units. Impacts to the campus community during November will include continued heavy construction traffic on Service Road. Here you see the new generator units being put into place, the sidewalks along the south side of the facility, interior space work in progress, and some views of the atrium spaces. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. For questions regarding the ISTEC facility project, contact project representative Carol Cool. Next, we have an update on the Business College Complex Edition. 
accomplishments during the month of October, including putting of air handlers into operation and commencement of wood ceiling and MEP finish installations. Impacts to the campus community during November will include the continued closure of the sidewalks traveling north and south between Shaw Hall and the Business College complex. Here are some shots of the progress being made in the interior spaces. And of the heated sidewalk installation in progress. Here is the site logistics plan showing those areas affected by construction. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. For questions regarding the Business College Edition project, contact Project Manager Tony Rhodes. Next is an update on the STEM facility construction project. This project is located at the site of the decommissioned Shaw Lane Power Plant. Accomplishments during the month of October included the installation of temporary window protection, progress on both masonry restoration and interior demolition, and the removal of the first floor in the annex wing. Impacts to the campus community during November will include increased construction traffic in the Shaw Lane Red Cedar Road intersection. After removal of the old window units, temporary protective film is installed to keep interior spaces weatherproof while work continues into the winter months. Here you see some of the deteriorated brickwork that is scheduled for replacement, a view from the second floor of the removed first floor of the annex wing, and a couple of shots of the demolition of the boiler units in progress. For questions regarding the STEM facility project, contact project manager Ken Gostock. Next is an update on the Cook Hall renovation project. Accomplishments during the month of October included the putting of mechanical equipment into operation, the completion of exterior masonry work, installation of lighting fixtures, and progress on flooring installation. Impacts to the campus community during November will include the continued inaccessibility of the construction zone with pedestrian detours in place. Here is a shot of the new window units in place, and some shots of the work being completed in the interior space. For questions regarding the Cook Hall project, contact Project Manager Amr Abdelazim. Next is an update on the Jenison Fieldhouse renovation project. Accomplishments during the month of October included progress on Phase 2 drywall installation, which will finish by the end of November. The project will be substantially completed by the first week of January, with occupancy by month's end. Impacts to building occupants during November will include the temporary rerouting of the egress route, which will be posted at the site. Here are some progress photos of various interior spaces. For questions regarding the Jenison Fieldhouse project, contact Project Manager Matt Postma. Next, we have an update on the Campus Water System Improvement Project which is located at the southeast corner of the Service Road and Recycling Drive intersection. Accomplishments during the month of October included completion of installation of underground plumbing for the water treatment plant, pouring of the floor slabs, and progress on structural steel and masonry installation. Impacts during November will include the temporary disruption of traffic until mid-November for water main connections along Service Road. Here is a shot of progress being made on the water treatment plant and of the center derrick crane, which has been erected as part of the water tower construction. It is interesting to note that part of the crane will actually remain in place after construction to serve as an access way for passage to the tank's roof. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. For questions regarding the Campus Water System Project, contact Project Manager Bob Nessel. Lastly, we have an update on the Music Building Edition Project. Accomplishments during the month of October included completion of demolition of Hart Recital Hall and Stair Tower, progress on mass excavation, and pouring of spread footings and basement walls. Impacts to the campus community during November will include general construction noise typical of a project of this magnitude. 
Here are some shots of work in progress on the basement walls and of the spread footings being poured. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. For questions regarding the Music Building Edition project, contact project manager Todd Wilson. This concludes the November Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you'll find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Watch our videos on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website around the 7th of each month. We thank you for taking the time to check us out, and we hope you'll visit again.